Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And take a look downtown. We got a lot of cloud cover. The sun was out, and it's probably still out in some places. Paul will tell us what to expect for the rest of the day and the weekend. Plus, fighting a resignation and a lawsuit. The vote to replace L. Brooks Patterson is filled with controversy. We are live from Oakland County. But first, we start this afternoon with an about face from Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, as well as Israel. First, her trip to Israel to visit her grandmother was blocked by the country. And then overnight, we learned that that decision was overturned and she would be allowed to travel there. Well, now we are hearing that the Congresswoman has decided against the visit altogether. Larry Spruill joins us now live with the very latest on the reason why. Good afternoon, Rhonda. Now, things have changed drastically for Congresswoman Tlaib over the last 24 hours. Yesterday, she was very vocal about all of this, but today we were told by her members here at her office that she is going dark and she is going to remain silent for it today. Now, this is video of our several attempts of trying to reach out to her earlier this morning. Now, my photographer Matt and I stopped by her home to talk to Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib today about why she decided to not go see her grandmother, but was denied access into the building. We also stopped by her main office today, but a member of her team told us she is not doing interviews and would not be available today. Now, all of this comes from a very busy couple of days for her. On Thursday, Israel announced it was barring to leave and her and Representative Omar from entry. That move came after a public statement from Donald Trump via Twitter saying it would show great weakness if Israel allowed Representatives Omar and to leave to visit. He also says they hate Israel and all Jewish people. Now, today we learned she was allowed to travel, but Tlaib says in a statement that she would not take that trip to see her grandmother after all. Here is a part of that statement. The Israeli government used my love and desire to see my grandmother to silence me and made my ability to do so contingent upon, upon my signing a letter. Reflecting just how undemocratic and afraid they are of the truth, my trip would reveal about what is happening in the state of Israel and to Palestinians living under occupation with United States support. I have therefore decided to not travel to Palestine and Israel at this time. Visiting my grandmother under these oppressive conditions meant to humiliate me would break my grandmother's heart, silencing me with treatment to make me feel less than it is not what she wants for me. It would kill a piece of me that always stands up against racism and injustice. Now, of course, this has a lot of people talking on social media and even people who live in her district. I am working to talk to those people who live in her district. I'll have that story coming up tonight at 5. We are live in New Center this afternoon. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry. Thank you. Now at noon, drama in Oakland County. The fight to fill the seat of longtime Oakland County Executive Albrooks Patterson has been filled with controversy. Priya Mann joins us now from Oakland County, where a public meeting to vote for his successor just went into recess. Priya, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rhonda. You know, there was no shortage of fireworks here. That meeting was packed with voters, veterans, preachers, even former board members who call what's happening here today an embarrassment. There's eight times written the resignation. Uh, the separation agreement was signed by the chief of staff to the board of commissioners. And that was processed, IDs, badges, everything else was taken away. The drama started with roll call at the Oakland County Board of Commissioners meeting. After Chairman Dave Woodward resigned, expecting to be appointed executive, the Democrat was back on the board after withdrawing his application. I don't know what laws this county commission lives by if constructive acceptance, if a resignation to the county clerk doesn't mean a darn thing. Without Woodward, the board would have been split evenly between Democrats and Republicans. With Woodward, the Democrats have a one-person majority. The process has outraged many voters. I'm shocked at this. Uh, that, that we're even doing this and that you're even seated up there. I'm just mind blown, I guess, by the Republicans clutching their pearls about this process right now when they did a run around around democracy and took redistricting when Democrats were clearly elected to county offices. 
The executive seat was vacated by the death of L. Brooks Patterson. The longtime Oakland County executive died from pancreatic cancer earlier this month, and the battle for his seat began almost immediately. I'm a proud Democrat. I know there's proud Republicans that are part of this body. We have always come together when it mattered to get the job done. This process has the opportunity to torch everything that has been good. Yeah, certainly a very tense morning. Now, both caucuses have recessed, and we will continue to be here and cover that vote as it is expected to happen later this afternoon. Reporting live from Pontiac, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, of course, we will cover what happens. Thank you, Priya. In the meantime, on a much lighter note, let's take a look at Ann Arbor, home of the big house. And we can't even see it. <laughs> it looks a little foggy out there. Um, let's get an update from Paul Gross about what to expect the rest of the day and the weekend. Could we see any rain today or is it just fog? Probably not. And that was actually a time lapse. Fog was starting to lift in Ann Arbor and downtown here. We're starting to see some brightness here and temperatures are responding slowly, but they are. And we're in the 70s. Very pleasant outside. Look at that. 71 in Adrian, 72 Pontiac, 73 Ann Arbor, 72 at Metro. And there's no rain in the area right now. We're going to show you the visible satellite, and you get three for the price of one on this one. There are three different things going on here. Okay, first of all, you see this kind of the solid gray right here? This is all this right here. That's the fog, the dense fog earlier this morning. That's lifting. You can see how quickly that dissipates. Then you see this stuff moving east. These are mid-level clouds, which you saw on the sky cam. They're right over downtown right now. And then you see these clouds just kind of popping up here. Those are cumulus clouds popping up as we warm up. So. All sorts of stuff going on here. So for the afternoon, we're going to have this mix of sun and clouds. 82 degrees the high. The humidity stays comfortable, so this will be a very pleasant day. There's only the small chance for a pop-up thunderstorm. Most of us don't see it. Most of us have a dry day. Be back to talk about the weekend forecast, and there is a lot to talk about straight ahead. All right, we'll see you in a few. Meantime, Clinton Township Police are looking for two people who they say are involved in a credit card fraud scheme. Take a look. Police say that these two went on a shopping spree at Partridge Creek using credit cards that didn't belong to them. If you think you know who they are, know anything about this, you are asked to contact Clinton Township Police. A man is now facing charges for allegedly making a terrorist threat against a popular local cider mill. Someone says that they heard Jonathan Keck say that he was going to shoot up Blake's cider mill in Macomb County. Police say that Keck made the threat after he was asked to fix a bathroom plumbing issue. We're told that when police went to his home to make the arrest, Keck made more threats against the cider mill. Keck is currently held on a $100,000 bond and could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. A Michigan State football athletic trainer is now facing sexual assault charges. 39-year-old David Yeager is accused of assaulting his girlfriend at Spartan Stadium and then lying about it back in 2015. Yeager is still employed by the university but has been on paid leave since March of 2018. He is also one of the 11 people named by the Attorney General's office as having failed to report his knowledge of the Larry Nassar abuse before it became public. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison. And here we go again, another weekend in the summer, another round of construction projects. Several lanes along major freeways or full freeways are going to be closed this weekend. Two lanes of westbound 696 from 94 to 75 is going to be closed for construction for the weekend. Westbound I-94 from I-96 to Michigan Avenue will be shut down until Monday. And only one lane of east and westbound I-94 will be open between US-24 and I-275 and the lodge in both directions at Wyoming is also closing for the weekend reopening on Monday morning. A trip to the Secretary of State can take hours and that is one of the reasons that some states are moving to digital driver's licenses. Coming up, why some security experts are not thrilled about the idea. But first, heroes in action. Officers rush into a home to rescue a choking baby. Next at noon, the heart-stopping moments that saved the child's life. 